more choices you have. That's crazy, right? That's a lot more choices. Uh, much more secure code. There's only 9,000 choices for a four-digit PIN, your ATM code. Uh, so if you punched in 9,000 different, well, unless they count zero, and then of course it'd just be 10,000. But uh, with, if you add the extra digit on there, it's much more secure. Lots more choices, so someone can't randomly just pick it. How many understood this problem? Be okay with it. Good. Let's go ahead and do take this a, a different way. Let's say that you have you have five different things. You've got apple. You've got orange. That's an orange. You've got banana. Grapes. <laughs> What's another fruit missing? Oh, kiwis. You get kiwis. Everyone likes kiwis. I'm allergic to kiwis. Who said that? <laughs> I feel so sorry for you. It's the best fruit ever invented. Does it make your mouth like all bubbly and stuff? It makes my throat like all swollen. Deal with it. <laughs> That's all right. I think if they're so acidic, like it gives me bubbles on my tongue, but eat them anyway. I don't care. They're so good. <laughs> Give these five fruits. It could be five of anything really that are different. What I'm asking is, how many ways can we put these five fruits in order? So how many different arrangements could we get out of this? One, two, three, four. There's five different spaces. How many ways could we arrange these fruits? So um, this is one arrangement, right? We do what I call these things. What's that? That's apple. Apple, orange, banana, grapes, kiwi. We could do that way. We could switch these two. Right? That would be another way. We could switch these two. That would be another way. We could put this one first. That would be another way. We can we could do all that and write them all out, but it's going to take us forever, right? We're going to draw a whole bunch of fruit uh, by the end of this, and we're, we're not going to want to do that. However, if we think about it like a fundamental counting rule, similar to that, that idea, how many choices would you have to put in your first order? So you're going to line these up on a shelf or something, or you're going to eat these in a certain order. You're going to eat a whole lot of fruit today. Which one, how many choices do you have for your first consumption? Five. Yeah, there's five fruits. You haven't eaten any of them yet. So there's five choices that you could eat first. But as soon as you eat the fruit, it's gone. How many choices do you have to eat second? Four. Then you eat the second fruit. It's gone. How many choices do you have for the third one? Three. And then? Two. And then? After, after you eat all these fruits, you only have one fruit left. There's only one choice at the very end. And then, well, you're done. You're out of fruit. You don't have anything else you can, you can place there. Does this make sense to you? Why our choices drop each time? So if we're putting things in order that are different, that are distinct or unique, we do have However many we have, that's how many choices we have for the first one. But as soon as you place that in the first spot, your choices drop by one, then drop by one. Every time you choose one of those unique items, you have a different, uh, a lower choice for the second one. Yes? But why would that be if you're not taking it out? Like if you're not like eating it, or if you're not, it's still there. But it's just a different order. Right. We're just counting the, number, the different orderings we could have this. The different... Yeah, but why do you have to like... Why, why does it take one away every time? You're eating it. Or if you're not eating it, what we're doing is we're counting the number of arrangements you could have. So this would count as one ordering, right? One ordering. As soon as I place this somewhere, if I, as soon as I place one of these fruits somewhere, I'll, uh, like at the beginning, I only have four choices to place a second fruit. It's not five, 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 because I don't have five of these different fruits all the time. I just have one apple. And I have one orange, one banana, one set of grapes, and one kiwi. So as soon as I place one down here, I say I have five choices for the first, first, uh, first pick. Let's say picking a team or something. I have five choices for the first pick. But as soon as I pick that one to get the rest of my arrangement, get the rest of my arrangement, I only have four choices for the next spot. Then I only have three choices for the next spot. Then only two choices for the next spot. But finally, I'm left with one. You could do this any way you want. If I rearrange these, that's what we're counting, is the number of arrangements we can make out of this. The number of different combinations, or I, I'm using it, combinations, actually called a permutation, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. Different arrangements of these five fruits. 
if you, if you don't want to consider them like you're actually eating them because we don't want them to go away or anything, uh, you could say, how many pictures could I take that were different of these fruits? How many different pictures? If I, if I don't exchange anything, that's one picture of the, the ordering of this fruit. Does that make sense? Then if I change these two, would that be a different looking picture to you? If I change these two, would that be a different looking picture to you? This is how many arrangements we have that would give you different pictures. So if you took your, your snapshot out and just take a look at those, this would be one way to do it. We have five choices for our first spot for our fruits. After that, that one's set. You only have four choices for the next one, then three, then two, then one. You take away that choice after you put this in a certain order. So. For, for instance, let's make, a, let's make one more arrangement. I can't draw these all day. Let's make one more arrangement. Let's say I pick banana first. You with me? How many did I have to choose from? I had five to choose from. I could have picked any one of those first, right? That's the banana first. Now that I've picked the banana, can I write another banana? I don't have another banana to choose from, unfortunately, because I like bananas. Still, they give me the bumps of my tongue, too. I think I'm just allergic to fruit. <laughs> but as soon as I pick the banana, I have how many choices for the next one? Okay, so what's the next choice that you want to pick? Orange. No, that's the wrong choice. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, orange. I have the banana, I have the orange. How many choices do I have for the next one? Okay, what do you want to pick? Can I pick a banana and the, or the orange again? No. That wouldn't make sense. So, I heard kiwi. Kiwi. <laughs> hairy, hairy baby. That's what it looks like to me. Hairy baby face. Okay, so we have hairy baby face. What's the next one? How many choices do I have for, that? for the next one? Does it look like hairy baby face? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a little hairy baby monster face. Anyway, that's a kiwi. So after I pick banana, then orange, then kiwi, I do. I only have two choices though, do you get it? I can only choose between my apple or my grapes. That's the only thing I can choose from. I'll choose apple. How many choices do I have for the last one? There's only one thing left. There's just the grapes. That's why you go down one for every single arrangement, that you, or for every single choice that you have. So you had five choices here, but then four, three, two, one. This counts as a different arrangement than this one. Does that make sense? The number of ways we can do this is I had five choices first, four choices second, three, two, then one. You multiply all those together, you're going to get how much? 120. What that means is that you have 120 different arrangements of these five fruits. I'm going to put a key word up here, five unique fruits. Did they have to be fruits? Could I have picked uh, books, five different books? Could have done that, right? Or five different uh, coins, or five different colored marbles or something like that? No matter what, as long as they're unique items, what we do to find out how many arrangements we can get out of that, you multiply them. But your choice just drops every time. You, have, you pick one. The choices drop down. You pick another one, the choices drop down. <clears throat> so this gives us 120 different ranges of five unique items. I'm not going to say fruits because this could go for any, any item, any five items that happen to be different. This could work for people. If I pick five different people and I put you in a line, I have five choices for the first person, but then I can't put that first person twice, can I? That wouldn't even make sense. I can't put the same person five times in a row. I have five choices for the first person line, then I have only four choices for the second person, then three, then two, then one. But we can represent this a little bit more nicely. What you need to know is that this five times four times three times two times one, that's actually a mathematical thing. Have you heard of it before? Have you seen, you might have seen it before if you ever had uh, a class similar to this one. We can write this as five, and we use a, a, a nice symbol after it. It's 
exclamation point. It's five factorial. It's not five, okay? <laughs> I'm so excited about that five. Yeah, it's not like five. No, it's, it's five factorial. In mathematics, that exclamation point means this idea. Did I just scare you? I saw you kind of just, uh, I told you I was going to wake you up today. This says it's a factorial. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're super excited about the math, okay? Even though it's awesome. Factorial. Did I scare you? Yeah. <laughs> so the 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, instead of writing all of that out, we can say 5 factorial. When you see the factorial, what it means is whatever number you have, sequentially, be multiplied sequentially by its successive numbers downwards until you get to 0. Okay, so 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to you get to zero, uh, to get to one. The zero, we have a de definition for that, you need to know. Zero factorial is defined to be one. That's just a definition, we have to have that, otherwise the factorials do not work. So here's what this tells us. This isn't just about fruit here, it's not just about colored marbles. This is about the unique items, that's really what I wanted to get across to you, or five unique people, or, or anything like that. This is about the arrangement of unique items. Here's what we learned. If I had ten different fruits, I would have ten choices for the first one, then nine, then eight, ten, then seven, then six, all the way down to one. Are you with me on this, folks? So what the arrangement of, of these unique items gives us is that any Any n unique items can be arranged n factorial different ways. For any set of n different items, the key word there is different though. Another word I used earlier was unique, different or unique. For any set of n different items, there are n factorial different arrangements that you can make of it. Instead of n different items, there are n factorial different arrangements possible. All this says, says shoot, if there was just more than five fruits, if there was like nine, you could arrange up nine times eight times seven times six times five. That'd be nine factorial. If there was a hundred different items, a hundred different people, how many ways could you put them in order? hundred choices for the first one, then 99, then 98, then 97, 96. It's just extending this concept. We can just say it this way, though, for n different items. In this case, we had five. There was five factorial ways we could arrange it. For any different items, there's n factorial different ways we can arrange it. Raise your hand if you feel okay about that understand it. Good. You ever been to Disneyland? There's only seven good rides at Disneyland, actually. There's the one that the, they blow the smells in your face. You know that one? The, um, yeah, that one. The, I just did like this. <laughs> Universal for soaring. There's that one. There's the loopy one. It's a good one. There's a teacup.